Tornador does not advertise a flow rating for the Tornador. There's a part number. 4214-90PS. But apparently... Oh, buddy. Do I have a treat for you today? Go ahead and show you guys something. It's not the brush. Oh, do you see it? Number three. <sighs> it's not the Rona. It's just that it's freezing. 18 degrees outside. Yeah, I think we got it. Okay, question, what is PSI? Google's telling us it is a unit of pressure, a pound force per square inch. Meaning PSI is nothing more than a measure of restriction. It's gonna happen, just wait. What I mean by that is if, if you have a pressure gauge on a tank and that tank is reading any pressure, you have contained that restriction in this tank that you can now read, okay? Perfect example of this would be to go and put a gauge on a Y on a garden hose, shut both valves, so he's not gonna say anything. Open the one with the gauge, and it'll read, okay? You open the other one, and it's just gonna flow out, and the, the gauge is gonna tank, because there's no restriction inside to measure. It is, it is now free-flowing. So, when it comes to compressors, you obviously pressurize this vessel that you are now containing, this pressure that you now use. When it comes to air tools, being pressured with a compressor, you can really cause some damage to the tool if you just crank the PSI up. To use that efficiently, you need to regulate it. I am all for just taking an impact, hooking it up to as much pressure as you can get, and just ugga, 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 ugga. I'm all for that. However, it comes to Tornadors. It's a completely different story. Look. One of these is six months old, and the other one is two years old. The one with the broken hose is six months. And as you can see, the, the grooves on the inside are, are dug out much, much more than the one that's two years old. I've yet to replace the hose. Okay. When it comes to these Tornadors, the more pressure you have, the more those hoses are going to whip around. Which is good, right? That is kind of what you want, but it beats the crap out of the tool itself, and it, it doesn't make your compressor as efficient as it could be. Let me show you. Actually, look. Look at this. I just realized this. Look, it has actually come through right here. Oh, come on. Focus, focus. Look at that. You can see my fingernail going through, okay? That's six months old of being around at 150 PSI. That's how thin and worn down it is. This one's two years old, being ran at 90 PSI. That's six months old of being ran at 150 PSI. This one's two years old, being ran at 90 PSI. When it comes to Tornadors, you want to regulate that pressure to down what the manufacturer recommends. Again, it's not something I normally do, but <laughs> with these, it's something you want to do. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my little secret to uh, do that very easily. We're gonna use a pancake compressor to do it. Not even I use the same fittings, look at that. See how that part's taller? This doesn't work with this fitting. Cause that's too deep. Son of a... So, oh. you'll find some fittings first. Number three. By the way, the best part about these guys right here, you can be in the middle of BFE Montana and you can still find one of these guys. It's obviously broken. Got a little bit of Teflon tape on it still, so it should seal pretty good. Anymore, and all of the compressors that you buy, 
are gonna have a regulator built in. Chances are you're gonna have two gauges. It's getting to be very, very common anymore to be just like this. Generally one gauge is for the tank pressure. REG pressure, the regulated pressure, the pressure it's coming out, that's the pressure you wanna turn down for something like this. Start it up and I'll show you. Now that we're plugged in, so we've got 150 PSI. Whew. Let's take 151, look at that. The other one's zero, okay? The reason for that is because our regulator's all the way down. Before we even start playing, there's gonna be a link down below. If you buy one of these off Amazon, this is exactly what it's gonna look like. Okay, <laughs> get a bag, a couple manuals. Look at that, they send you an air fitting. That's quality right there. Woo! It's even chromed out, dog. But there's no candy though. That right there is what a brand new one looks like. There's no ridges on the inside of that cone. So in this bag, because most people do send you a bag, I guess I didn't need to open the bag to read the instructions. Okay, it's right here. Air requirement. Tools require a minimum air pressure of 50 to 90 PSI. Do not exceed 90 PSI. Let me put all this back in the bag quick. I don't know if it's supposed to be opened up. Because remember, if you do that, that's what happens in six months, okay? So what we're gonna do Okay, all the way up to 50 All day. Now, is it the strongest? No. But I could run this all day. up to 150 but I never drop below the 50 psi going out right the air going out is that constant 50 psi meaning you you could blow out an interior with a pancake compressor you really can in fact the next interior I do this is what I'll use that's plenty let's go up to 90 psi Are you gonna have more pressure here? Yeah, for sure. Much more aggressive, okay? But you're gonna use a whole lot more air too. How much more? So now that I've gone the backwards way of explaining it, I'll explain. Did regulate my pressure, but more than less, I controlled my flow. Every compressor has a flow rating. It's 2.6 SCFM at 90 PSI. That isn't very much at all. TornadorTools.com. These are $68 on their website. It's cheaper to get them off Amazon. No wonder why this is one of the most commonly asked questions in the fake book groups. Because they don't advertise a minimum flow. But apparently a pancake compressor at 50 PSI is enough to do it. For everybody else, if you run Tornadors a lot. These are the easiest ways to idiot proof your line. 290 PSI. This is what I ran in my trailer 
on my reel. That's why in that video I only had 90 PSI because I have one of these. I'm gonna put a link to these in the description as well. All this is is a fixed 90 PSI regulator that you put in line. I put the air fittings here just to demonstrate that it goes in line with an the air fittings, but it's just quarter inch pipe thread. You can thread it right into your compressor. If you buy this off Amazon, this is what it's gonna look like, except I already took the regulator out. But in the bag, there's these instructions. Read those if you get one of these. It tells you how to do it. Yeah, look, there's a part number. 4214-90PS. The 90 is for, for 90 PSI. They have a few different pressures. Again, for you guys with bigger compressors, shops, trailers with a dedicated reel, etc. They use a ton of tornadors. Buy one of these. It is well worth its weight in gold. So if my pancake compressor can run my tornador. What kind of a compressor do you need for a detail keg? This is number three. Signed by a couple dudes. But it doesn't matter. This one's used. So before before you guys go, go and watching something else, probably a lot cooler. You know, now that you have the information that you want, I'm going to show you guys the three cheapest ways to pressurize a detail keg. It probably won't be number three though. I don't know, we'll see. For all three of these ways, you will need a tire chuck lid. You can get these off the website. Way number one, go to a gas station that just so happens to offer free air. Pretty simple. Switch out your lid, put on your tire chuck lid, pressure it up. It took forever to pressure this up, by the way. I was about over it by the time we got done with it. I should have checked the air when I was done, but I, I did. I depressurized it and went on with my day. Number three. The second cheapest way would be to go to a gas station that charges you air. This one's $1.50. The third is to go to Home Depot and pick up this little guy. Said and done, it was $26.78. Get the one with the plug though, not the cigarette lighter. 